have new pages to share with you. I also have this week's results as well as your next assignment. I have some event news to share and I want to leave time at the end for question and answers. But before we get started on all of that, I want to check in and see how you're doing. This has been a heart-wrenching week, especially for those of us here in America. I know that some of you are not states, but you can't have escaped the news. I shared speak about kind of my own perspective of what's going on and my own commitment to wanting to make sure that I'm part of the ongoing solution. So this week for me has been a lot of listening and reflecting and really just trying to go inward and think about my part in all of this and what I can do. So I'd love to hear how you're doing. Um, and I also thought I would share an example of something that um, relates to the experiences that we're having in America right now in a bookish way. I guess for a big event, this is probably like 15 or 16 years ago, and I went down to the pool and I brought a book with me, How Stella Got Her Groove Back. Has anyone read it? It's such a just joyous delight if you're looking for some escapism. And I set the book down next to me. I had like a fun fruity drink and I found my spot at the pool and there was a woman in the lounge chair next to me and she saw the cover of the book, which I'm sharing here if you can't see it. And she said something to the effect of like, oh wow, that's so great that you're reading a book on slavery. And I was totally taken aback because I was like, no, it's, it's just a fun light book. The Shopaholics series was really popular around that same time, so it was pitched as, um, you know, just kind of like a modern day fairy tale. But this week, as I'm reflecting on our sordid past as Americans, um, I thought like that's just such a great example of uh, kind of how we might view the world through a different lens. The idea that there is a beautiful black woman on the cover immediately made this woman think that it must be a serious book on slavery. So I just thought I would share that with you. And I'm, I'm curious if you've had any sort of moments like that this week as we're all going through this hardship together. I'm glad to hear you're doing okay, Carolyn. It's, it's a little stressed and yes, kindness. The most important thing I think we can do right now is try to spread kindness. I know that my slant when I am writing and my slant whenever I'm sharing anything on social media is to do that in a tone of joy and kindness. So I am with you on that. How Stella got her groove back. Audio is still off. Oh no. Hopefully it's coming back for you, Reba. I think, I think everybody is, is feeling it. I know, Heidi, all, all of our hearts are hurting. And I think one thing that I know is important for me is I'm going to continue my own growth and journey and making sure that not only is this a channel for spreading light and joy, but it's, it's for helping impart systemic change, which is something that I feel that we need desperately. Okay, yes, there was a movie about this book, Carolyn, and it's great. You should read the book and then you should go watch the movie because it's just, it's a great story about a strong, powerful woman in her 40s um, who is a yuppie of the times. Uh, she takes off to Jamaica and finds romance with a much younger man. It's just, it's fun, it's light apism, it's great. Um, okay, so onward on that note, um, but always, I want you all to know that this space and this community that we've created is always a place where I think all of us should feel welcome and safe to share whatever is in our hearts and minds. Onward we shall go. Oh, sorry, I have a little drippy nose from our beautiful trees here in Oregon that are blooming like crazy. Okay, results. We did not get to results because there was so much going on this week, but you voted. And before I get to the pages, you have to know what you all collectively decided is gonna happen next. Are you ready? Are you ready for this week's results? Question number one was, why did Richard break up with Tony? Take a nice long look. I will give you a second to soak that one up. He discovered she stole the deed to the Mary Windsor. I have to tell you, I was sort of secretly hoping you would all pick this one, so thank you because that made my job slightly easier in writing this week's pages. <laughs> and I'm curious if you voted for this. 
one or not. This one was close. I would say the fact that um, he found out that she lied about everything, I think that particular question was including her name, was, was pretty tight there. Um, followed closely by number three and four. And then <laughs> I did think the concept of him being devastated that she wasn't a fabulous and famous actress was, was great, but that one... That one lost out. Okay, then we have to get on to question number two, and this one is the doozy. This is going to set the tone for the last few parts of this collective project. Are you ready? Who was the killer? <laughs> Hank! Hank! Hank did it! <laughs> Hank's the killer? All right, okay. Tony was a close second. Brady was not even in there. I do love the fact that Richard Lord got one single vote. He got one vote. So what that tells me is as much as we all loathe Richard, we must love to hate him because, you know, he wasn't really even a contender for this one. <laughs> okay, so those are our results. Now we need to get on to this week's pages. Are you ready? We now know that Tony stole the deed for the Mary Windsor, and we know that Hank is the killer. So without further ado, let's get on to part 11. It would help if I didn't have them upside down, if I'm going to try to read, huh? Okay, here's part 11, a brunch with death that you have written. Here we go. Richard reached into his pocket and ring again. I the man's the girl of my dreams. Girl? Tony had a few years on me. I wouldn't exactly classify her as a girl, but I let Richard speak. Do you know what she did? I wanted to scream, no, but instead I plastered on a look of concern and said, no, Richard, do tell. She broke into my personal safe at the Mary Windsor. I gasped, <gasps> the horror. He nodded, it's worse. She stole the deed to the hotel. Why? My thoughts immediately went to the document we'd discovered in the safe deposit, in the safe deposit box with Peter's name listed as the rightful owner to the Mary Windsor. Richard shrugged. I have no idea. I'm clueless. It doesn't make any sense. I promised Tony the world. Ashland was going to become her stage. I was going to make her famous, a household name. Well... I couldn't fault Richard for having lofty goals. She betrayed me, he continued, staring at the ring. How did you find out? Hank informed me. He caught her in the act and said that he'd been going back and forth on whether he should say anything. He decided I need to, needed to know, and I thanked him for that. In fact, I'm going to have to give that kid a raise. That's a loyal employee right there. Absolutely, I agreed. Oh, Richard sighed. I should get back to the hotel. I clapped him on the shoulder. Be well, my friend. There's a reason that Shakespeare penned so many sonnets. Love, it can be a heartbreaker. Yeah, yeah, he shuffled away, <clears throat> his voice cracking. See you tomorrow. Who would have thought that I would have ended up feeling sorry for Richard Lord? I couldn't help it as I watched him lumber toward the hotel. Good for Hank. It must have taken some serious nerve to work up the courage to tell Richard that his fiance had stolen valuable documents. I was exhausted from the dizzying events of the day, but I knew one thing for sure. Tony had to be the killer. It made perfect sense. She had stolen the deed and handed it over to Richard to forge. The only question was who had her intended victim been? Peter or Richard? My money was on Richard. Something must have gone wrong. Peter accidentally drank the poison instead of Richard, perhaps? On my way home, I congratu congratulated myself on a job well done. I had sleuthed out the real killer before the professor. Ha! Huh. I couldn't wait to tell Juliet about it in the morning. The morning dawned sooner than I expected. I must have fallen asleep the moment my head hit the pillow, because the next thing I knew, a pounding rain lashed at my bedroom window. I glanced at the clock. It was after seven. How did Juliet stand these ungodly hours? I shrugged at the thought and dragged myself to the shower. 
Today was our big performance, so I dressed for the occasion in a well-cut navy blue suit, a crisp white shirt, and an iridescent silver tie. Not bad, Lance, I said, taking note of my appearance in the mirror. Yesterday's fall breeze had turned into a full-blown wind and rainstorm. I grabbed my overcoat before heading out into the weather. The howl of the wind and the flying debris made an ominous and fitting backdrop for the day. A murderer was about to be revealed. Justice would soon be served. I hurried to tort. Juliet had had to be looped in on what I had learned from Richard last night. The bake shop was already buzzing. A line of regulars waited at the espresso bar for maple lattes and spiced chai mochas. I stopped long enough to get a steaming cup of joe and a slice of pumpkin bread before heading downstairs. Juliet looked resplendent in her cherry red tort apron and her soft caramel turtleneck. She directed her staff as tray after tray of buttery almond croissants and mini quiches came out of the oven. Good morning, darling, I called from the doorframe. Juliet caught my eye and waved, come on in. I stepped into the busy kitchen and did a double take. Brady stood next to Juliet. He wore a matching apron and was whisking a large bowl of eggs with a flourish. What are you doing here, I asked. He stopped stirring for a moment. Juliet's giving me lessons, remember? Oh, that's right, it totally slipped my mind. I set my coffee on the counter. What smells so divine? Brady returned to the whisking. We're making cinnamon roll French toast casserole and bacon cheddar scones. The scones are already in the oven. This goes in next. We're gonna bring both over to the Mary Windsor for brunch. I guess there's some kind of special brunch happening this morning? Yes, yes there is. I rubbed my hands together. On that note, I think you'll both be interested in what I learned last night. I proceeded to tell them about my conversation with Richard and my theory that Tony must be the killer and that poor M Mr. Lord was her intended victim. That could be, Juliet sounded thoughtful, although why kill Richard? They were already engaged. It seems like if she went through the, with the wedding, she'd be guaranteed ownership of the Mary Windsor. I sighed, darling, obviously you need some more coffee. I took a sip of mine to prove my point. Think about it. Tony must have been goots. They planned this entire charade. She had no intention of marrying him. She simply needed to cozy up to him in order to gain access to the safe. Once the deed had been forged, there was no need for Richard. They kill him off and successfully have total control of the Mary Windsor. Brady poured the fluffy egg mixture over a pan of cinnamon rolls. That makes sense. Thank you. I gave him a bow. Juliet rolled her eyes. I'm not ruling it out. I, I think it's a good theory. I'm still confused about Tony, though. Why go through faking an engagement? It's hardly as if the Mary Windsor is a fortress. Couldn't one of them have broken into the safe without the whole charade, as you say, of an engagement? Before I could respond, a voice sounded behind us. I believe I can answer that. I turned to see the professor walking toward us. This should be good. I wonder what he has to say. Ha uh ha -huh. <laughs> It's so good. <laughs> Marie says, oh my God, I need an almond croissant, right? I do too, I know. I'll tell you is so funny about writing this is that I am in the middle of editing book number 13 for the Bake Shop Mysteries, and it is set in summer. So I started writing like all these frappes and frothy drinks, and then I'm like, no, wait, this our, our brunch is in the fall. It's in the fall. We need pumpkin. We need maple lattes, everything else. Okay, so this is where we're standing with a brunch with death. We have just a few parts left. In fact, this next week we are going to reveal the actual killer 
who you voted on. Um, I hope that what you see in those pages or hear in those pages is how Lance may or may not be wrong. This is what I do all the time when I'm actually writing a mystery. We have to shift suspicion. So we're leading up to the climax. We're almost gonna reveal who the killer is and Lance is convinced it's Tony, but is he right? Sadly, not so much. Although of course he's gonna be um, very self-inflated about being sure that he's right. Okay, so the next thing is your assignment. You have two assignments this week. Are you ready for assignment number one? Let's get to one. What does the professor explain to them about Tony? Why did she break into the safe and take the deed? Okay, so that's the first thing I want you to think about. We have all this suspicion on Tony now because Richard has revealed that the reason he hooked up with her. We know that there's this deed floating around with Peter's name on it. So we've got to wrap up that loose end. So between now and Sunday night, I want you to start thinking about potential motives and what Tony's real reason for that is. It's not that she killed him. So what's the real reason? Okay, we clear on that one? Excellent. Okay, and then your second assignment one is what is Hank's motive? Why has Hank killed Peter? This is a super important one, especially because next week's pages, Jules and Lance are gonna put on the skit to reveal Hank as the killer. So we need to know why. Why in the world did he need Peter dead? What was his motive? Those are two big assignments for the weekend. So your creative energy should be rocking and rolling with those. As always, you can comment on any of my social channels. I always look at the blog, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, all of them, and then I will compile five possible options for both of those questions and share them out next week as we inch closer to revealing a killer. I've had so much fun with this. I hope you're still having fun with it. I have some ideas about how we're going to do it again. I know we talked about that briefly last week, but one of the things that I'm thinking about doing is setting up a Facebook group for this. So we have our own private group within Facebook where we can have ongoing discussions and then everyone, if you're part of that group, would automatically get notified because I know that for a number of you, you're saying, oh, if I don't set a reminder, I can't see the questions or you forget. So that might be um, one easy way that we can do that when we move forward with a Sloan spinoff, probably in July is what I'm thinking, sometime next month. Okay, um, let's see. I'm going to get to your questions, um, but first I want to share some upcoming events. About last week too, and I think I've mentioned a few times on social, the entire launch for Nothing But Trouble is going to be here on social media. And I have so many fun events planned with a variety of my favorite local independent bookstores. We're gonna be doing some bunt bakes around Ashland. We're gonna be doing some bunt bakes here on Facebook. I'm gonna have so many bunts in my kitchen. I My neighbors are gonna hate me because I think every day for the next month, I'm gonna be walking up saying, please eat some bunt. Um, so I hope you'll join me. I'm gonna be sharing them all here in the next few days. And and because they're happening on social and on a variety of my channels, I'll be doing some here on Facebook, I'll be doing some on Instagram, some live on YouTube. You can find me wherever you're most comfortable. I've got all kinds of giveaways and special swag to share, as well as the partnerships that I'm doing with some of my favorite indie building that if you're in getting it, you do that. I can't that both about to hit bookshelves later this month. This book, I know I've said it a couple times and actually I'm going to I'm going to share a video next week about kind of a primer for this one, but this is Tort's origin story. We're going to go back in time and this book is really told all through Juliet's dad's voice, um which is such a shift for me and um I just I can't wait to share it with you. Okay, so with that, I am super excited to answer questions about this week's pages, about your assignments, and anything else you want to ask me. So, okay, Patty asks, 
What is the name on the original deed? Peter or Peter's name is what we found in the safe deposit box when Fesser and Lance and Jules went to the basement of by other. That was the deed that was named on the deed. So that may or may not help you in deciding kind of what that means. I'm not gonna, I have my ideas because I can't separate mystery out of myself because this is a collaboration it's on, it's on all of you. So put your thinking caps on for that one. Uh, let's see. Um, oh good, you like the Facebook group ideas. You can design us with top fan badges. It says you can do top fan badges. I don't know what that is on Facebook. If you're just fan badge, that's awesome. I don't know to look into that, um, but I'm glad to hear that you guys like the Facebook group idea. Uh, let's see. Still can't get it. Uh, does Richard, okay, here's another question from Patty. Does Richard know which name is on the original deed? Okay, that's a really great question. And this is one of the tricky things about writing a short. I was just checking, so I think our pages now were at about 50 pages. We were talking about this last time. And I think when we finish, we'll probably be somewhere between 55 and 60 pages. Obviously, a regular book, a regular mystery is more like 300 pages. So we're not going into deep detail, but that could be important in trying to kind of nicely wrap up our mystery in the next few sections. Thus far, there's been no mention that Richard has any awareness of the deed. Um, so I think that is potentially something interesting that you could explore because we know that the professor Lance and Juliet found the deed. We heard Tony and Peter early on in the short doing some kind of plotting together, whether or not that was around the deed or not. And then we've just learned from Lance's conversation with Richard that Richard is aware that Tony has stolen the deed. Um, whether or not they're the same, I'm not sure. So very good question on that. Yeah. Let's see. Any other questions? Okay. Um, dun, dun, dun. I love that you all get to communicate with each other on this too. Great. Okay. Uh, let's see. So to recap, your assignment runs until Sunday. I will send out the potential options for voting. Oh, wait. Okay, before I recap, Heidi asks, who forged the deed? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe you know. Do I know? No. That's your job. Uh, I think the deed obviously is potentially key in this, okay? Because... We know that basically everyone has had some kind of touch with it. Oh, one other just kind of refresher. And if you need to remember all the pages are on my blog, as well as all of the live readings are on my blog too. If you need to go back and refresh your memory as you're working on this most critical step, I'm gonna be grading you on this assignment. No, I'm not, it's just for fun. But um, Hank was also in the kitchen. Let's remember that. So. Brady brought out champagne that he served to everyone to toast to Richard and Tony's engagement. Peter took a drink that Brady had him and then sadly bit the dust. Um, but Hank was in the kitchen. Hank works at the front desk. So we also are still not sure what he was doing in the kitchen. So that's another important thing to think about. Terry missed the entire thing. Oh, yes, I will definitely share it. In fact, my um, super editing husband all early while we're waiting for everyone to um come on Genevieve said oh thank you that's very nice um how am I so talented it's not it comes with a lot of work I, I would say writing in general is just it's building that muscle every day I write every day I write 2,000 words every day uh, I am currently, like I mentioned, in the middle of editing book 13 in the Bake Shop Mysteries. 
Oh yeah, yeah. Um, I, <laughs> my little side commentary here says I should make an announcement, which I did earlier, but I will tell you just in case you didn't hear it because I know you don't always see everything that I share on social. The series has been renewed. So book 12, Chilled to the Cone, will come out at the end of this year. It comes out like the last week of December. And then I'm working on book 13 right now. This book is super fun. Andy is going to be at the center of book 13. He's going to be participating in a West Coast competition. A real thing for artisan cough job special West Coast it's everywhere. There are these throat competitions where you have to, you know, make the perfect cappuccino. Just not only on your sensory tasting, but also on your exactly how many steps you follow and everything. So it's kind of the theme of 13. And then, um, We'll definitely be booking for that. So I'm already in the process of kind of sketching those out because the series has been renewed through 15th. Oh my gosh, so much more Jules and Lance and Andy and the whole team to come. I cannot wait. Uh, but I got off track in terms of writing. I just, I really do think it's practice. And I will tell you that as I'm writing book 15, even, you know, multiple books in, because with my other series that I've written, I think I'm up to like 24 five books or some insane number that I can't even believe I have to pinch myself sometimes. Uh, when I'm actually in the middle of drafting a book, I it just, I think it's terrible. But the gift of writing for a while is I know that's part of the process. I just tell myself like, yep, it has to be terrible when you're writing a draft and I'm going to fix it all later. So my best advice is just keep writing, keep writing every day, even if it's just a little bit, even if it's just a paragraph or a page a day. Like any other muscle, if you use that writing brain, it grows stronger and stronger over time. And then just give yourself permission to know that your first draft is going to be terrible. I don't know any writer who writes just a beautiful, meticulous first draft. Nobody does that. Um, so yeah. Okay, let's see. Leah asks, once we're completely done, would you be willing to do a full read through of the pages all at once? Too long. Oh, um, sure. If you, if you want to listen to me read all of them, I'd be happy to, of course. Um, I don't think that's too long. I, it'd be interesting to see because I think in general they run, I'd have to go back to YouTube to look, but what do they run like 10 minutes? So if we did them all together, maybe that's like a 45 minute read. Sure. Why not? I'm still thinking about, um, how I'm going to share tangible copies. I know that we'll share the ebook copy. Um, do you do any acting? No, <laughs> fatty, no, definitely not. That's so funny. Thank you. I'm glad that you enjoy it. You know, I have hired to be uh, an actor. I don't have any interest in acting. I'm here in my basement, um, in my cozy little cave. But I will say from a young age, mom loud and she would always hear voices. And I did that with my son growing up too, especially, you know, like Harry Potter and all those yummy gems. So I do enjoy reading voice, but no, I don't, I don't want to be an actor. <laughs> um, anything else? Reba asks 24 books in the series. Totally. Like what would that be? Two dozen? Well, I was thinking 13 will give us a baker's dozen. Sterling does need his storyline too. Um, he definitely, I'm trying to wear, it's always hard because books, have, I can't remember. Sterling, Sterling does get quite a bit of a storyline into the cone. That's right. So, well, let's take a Glad that you're all excited. Um, Christella. Ooh, I love that name, Christella. What about more Sloan? Yes, uh, more Sloan is coming. Book four in the Sloan Krause series. This is movies that is set in Linth, Washington. Book four, Without a Brew, comes out in October. So I'll be sure about that at probably, you know, like summer. I, I comes up, so I'm loving the cover. It's the first time we see side intro. And then uh, book five is in the works. So that um, there's lots more to come there too. There was something I wanted to say about that. Oh, I know. My plan is that our collaboration is going to be Sloan spinoff. We'll give Sloan some love. And then if you all keep enjoying this process, we'll come back and we'll do another one with Sterling or Steph or Bethany or any of them. Let's see. Diana asks, how old are Lance, Richard, Tony, Peter? Did someone say that Hank was Richard's son? Um, I don't really know how old Hank, Tony, and Peter are. I don't think we really went through that. In my mind, I would imagine them to be, I don't know, somewhere. 
Well, no, actually, that's not true. Hank, I believe that uh, Richard refers to him as a kid. And I think when Lance first meets him, he references a younger front desk staff member. So I'm going to guess that Hank's somewhere in his mid-20s, whereas Tony and Peter are closer to Richard's age. Richard is in his 50s. Lance is in his late 40s. Does that help? Yeah. Okay, anything else? Uh... Yeah, I'm glad you're loving Sloan, uh, Lillianne. I love getting to write her too. I think she's really different than Jules, so it's easy for me as a writer to separate them out. And then I think they have these points of connection too. I often think in my head, well, they did meet once in a short that I wrote to launch that series. But um, I think if they met, Sloan would be like Jules' bigger sister and kind of take her under her wing and and care for her, you know? Yeah. Super sweet. Okay, let's see, any other questions before we round up this week's live? And then definitely I will share it again. And as I mentioned, I will share the actual pages so you can go back and read it on my blog too. If you need a refresher, your ascent runs through Sunday. We'll go for two more weeks of this. So next week's pages, Jules and Lance will put on the skit, will reveal the killer, and then the final part, just like what happens in a traditional mystery, will be kind of everybody coming together and there'll be some sort of lovely resolution. And of course, a young brunch. We got in our bacon cheddar scones and our uh, cinnamon, so our drink will probably take next week. And then those recipes will also be included in the final book as well. Great. Oh, Leah asks if I'm coming back to Vancouver for a book tour. At some point, unfortunately, all of the book tour for this next book is only online. No in-person tour for this with COVID-19. And, um, you know, we'll just have to wait and see how things play out in the fall. As of right now, um, talk at the publishing houses, maybe that that stays the same, but I don't know. We'll see. We'll just see how it plays out. But there will definitely be opportunities to um, share in talks. I'm doing an event with Vintage Books as one of them, so they'll have signed copies. I'll be personalizing copies through independent bookstores, and I have lots of fun giveaways to share here. Okay, everybody, thank you so much for being here with me, for being part of this community. More than ever, I appreciate it this week, and I want you to know how much um, it means to be connected with all of you. I hope you have a fantastic weekend. If there are other questions that I didn't get to, I will make sure, feel free to ask them here on this thread and I'll either answer them here on the thread or I'll write them down and share them at next week's live. Have a great weekend. And as always, happy plotting. I can't wait to see what you come up with. Bye.